Crackle and Pop in the Midnight Mystery. It was going to be a big treat for Joshua and James, a week at Aunt Martha's house during school vacation. The two cousins were only one month apart in age, and they looked forward to the chance to spend time together because they lived in different towns during the year. The boys had visited with Aunt Martha this past summer and had a wonderful time. Aunt Martha's big old house was on the beach, and there were so many things to do. But this vacation was different. It was the first time they had visited Aunt Martha during winter recess. The beach looked so different in winter. It looked strange and empty, with all the summer people gone. A lot of the homeowners closed their houses for the winter and went south, where the weather was warm. But not Aunt Martha. She lived at the beach all year long, so it was a real pleasure for her to have this midwinter visit from her favorite nephews. It's so good to see you boys, Aunt Martha said. You look as if you've grown a whole head taller, just since last summer. Aunt Martha always knew the right thing to say. So the week began, sharing stories about the past few months over a cup of hot chocolate and a plate of marshmallow treat snacks. Joshua mentioned that he had had some problems in school this year, but that his three special friends had helped him work everything out. James and Aunt Martha both wanted to know who these special friends were, and Joshua said their names were Snap, Crackle, and Pop. I have an idea, Joshua, Aunt Martha said. Since James and I are very interested in meeting your friends, invite Snap, Crackle, and Pop to visit with us. There's plenty of room in this big old house, and it will be fun for everyone. Joshua hurried to telephone Aunt Martha's invitation, and Snap, Crackle, and Pop accepted. They would join Joshua and James tomorrow. Soon it was time to go to sleep. The boys went upstairs, and in no time they had washed, were in their pajamas, and under a big pile of blankets. They were both so excited, they thought they would stay awake for a long time. But in a few moments, the only sound that could be heard in the room was the wind outside the big old house. The hours passed, and then Aunt Martha's clock began to chime midnight. At the sound of the clock, James' eyes shot open. Suddenly, he was wide awake. Joshua was still sound asleep. James got out of bed and tiptoed toward the window. It was a clear and starry night. Oh, how the wind howled across the beach and through the quiet streets. Suddenly, a light went on in the attic window of the house across the street. It was the only light in the entire house, and James got a funny feeling. He walked over and touched Joshua's shoulder. Joshua was awake in an instant. What's the matter, James? Don't you feel well? He asked. James put his finger to his lips. Shh! And pointed to the window. Both boys peered out as James told Joshua about the light in the house across the street. What's so strange about a light, James? You didn't have to wake me up to show me that. James looked right at his cousin. That house is closed for the winter, Joshua. The people who live there are in Florida. Don't you remember Aunt Martha told us that this afternoon? The two cousins stared at each other and out the window at the light in the attic. It was Joshua who spoke first. I sure wish Snap, Crackle, and Pop were here now. They always help me when I've got a problem. James nodded. He agreed that Snap, Crackle, and Pop were just the help they needed to check out the mysterious light in the attic. Tomorrow, they would have to investigate with Snap, Crackle, and Pop. But now it was time to get some sleep. It was cold and clear when Joshua and James awoke. They washed, dressed, brushed their teeth, and quickly went downstairs to have one of Aunt Martha's delicious breakfasts. There was one important fact they had to double-check with Aunt Martha. That's right, boys, said Aunt Martha. Nobody lives in that house across the street in the wintertime. The Greens spend their winters in Florida. The house is closed up tight. Now, you two just remember to bundle up tight when you go out. It's cold out there. It was cold, but James and Joshua didn't feel a thing. They couldn't wait until Snap, Crackle, and Pop arrived. What a mystery they had to share. And if anyone could solve it, Snap, Crackle, and Pop could. Joshua was sure of that. Soon, three familiar figures came walking down the street. Snap, Crackle, and Pop got a warm welcome from Joshua and were happy to meet James. The cousins lost no time in explaining the mysterious light in the house that was supposed to be empty. Snap listened closely. Crackle listened closely. But Pop couldn't wait to run along the beach. He finally joined the others. When James and Joshua had finished, Snap made a suggestion. Tonight would be a test. Everyone would stay up to see if the mysterious light went on again. Once the plan was made, Joshua and James brought Snap, Crackle, and Pop in and introduced them to Aunt Martha. When evening came, Snap, Crackle, and Pop joined Joshua and James in their room. They spent hours talking about what the light in the attic could mean. One thing seemed clear. Someone was coming into the Green's house. But who? And for what reason? Try as they might to stay up until midnight, one by one they all fell asleep. 
As soon as Aunt Martha's clock started to strike midnight, Joshua jumped up and ran to the window. The house across the street was still completely dark. Quickly, he awakened James and snapped Crackle and Pop. They all stared at the window. At 12.15, the light in the attic went on. The whole group froze. Surely this proved that someone was in the Green's house. James thought they ought to wake Aunt Martha, but the others didn't agree. Joshua was sure Snap, Crackle, and Pop would get to the bottom of the mystery. After a short conference, Snap suggested that they put on some warm clothes and open the window wide. Maybe they could hear something that would give them a clue to what was happening in the house across the street. Carefully, they opened the window. The cold wind blew right in. Then they heard a sound. It was music, and it was definitely coming from the Green's house. Snap called everybody back into the room and closed the window. He had an idea that might solve the mystery. Next morning at breakfast, Joshua and James asked Aunt Martha a whole lot of questions about Mr. and Mrs. Green. Why are you so interested in the Greens? The boys just kept asking questions. No, the Greens do not have a piano, said Aunt Martha. These are the strangest questions. And Mr. Green worked for the telephone company before he retired. He was not a musician, at least not to my knowledge. Now, boys and girls, turn the recording over and continue. Joshua and James quickly glanced at Snap, Crackle, and Pop with excitement in their eyes. No piano in the house. Mm. Snap was ready with an idea. He suggested that the boys write a note and leave it on the front door of the Green's house. Crackle and Pop said they'd be brave enough to stick the note on the door. During the day, of course. But what to write? Finally, the note was finished. Enjoyed the music. We'd like to meet you. Signed, J.J.S.C.P. That should do it, thought James. Whoever was coming to the Green's house at midnight would know that the visits had been discovered. Would that mysterious someone answer the note? All there was to do was to put up the note and wait one more night. As always, Aunt Martha's clock chimed at midnight. Five pairs of eyes stared out the window. This time, the light didn't go on until 12.20. Whoever was there must have seen the note. There was nothing to do but wait until morning. As soon as breakfast was over, Snap, Crackle, and Pop and the boys went over to check their note and see if there was an answer. On the door was a sign that said, Concert, Saturday, 3 p.m., all invited. The boys decided they had to tell Aunt Martha about what was going on. They raced home and explained to their aunt all about the light in the attic of the Green's house after midnight. And now, a concert on Saturday. Saturday? That's tomorrow, said Aunt Martha. Well, things certainly aren't dull when you two are here with Snap, Crackle, and Pop. I say we all go tomorrow and see who's been making music in the attic of the Green's house. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to call Chief Ryan of our local police and tell him what's been going on. That gave Snap, Crackle, and Pop an idea. Perhaps Tony the Tiger and his children, Tony Jr. and Antoinette, would enjoy the concert, along with Toucan Sam. Well, as long as we're going to have some protection, I guess there's no harm in inviting a few more people, explained their aunt. Go telephone them and ask them to come for lunch, said Aunt Martha. Saturday afternoon, Tony the Tiger, Tony Jr., Antoinette, and Toucan Sam all arrived together. After one of Aunt Martha's special lunches, everyone was ready to go across the street and get to the bottom of the mystery. Chief Ryan came just in time to escort the whole group to the concert. On the front door of the Green's house was a big sign. Welcome to concert in the attic. Please follow the arrows. After climbing two flights of stairs, the visitors arrived at the door to the attic. Standing in front of it was a smiling young man of about 21. Stephen, is that you? said Aunt Martha. Why, I can hardly recognize you. You used to come out here when you were James and Joshua's age to visit your aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Green. But I haven't seen you in several years. What have you been doing aside from scaring Snap, Crackle, Pop and my two nephews? They thought you were a burglar coming up here to the attic after midnight. Stephen brought the whole group into the attic and there they saw all kinds of musical instruments and tape recorders. He explained to everyone that he was a musician and composer, and that since his aunt and uncle were away, they invited him to set up his studio in their attic. This way he could practice, play and record, and not disturb anyone. As for his late night schedule, he explained to Snap, Crackle and Pop that he attended school during the day, 
had a part-time job in the evening and could only spend a few hours after midnight on his writing. I think you should begin the concert, Stephen. We would all like to hear what you have written, said Aunt Martha. When I was small, I learned a trick I want to share with you. It's such a very simple thing, so natural to do. When something new looks awfully hard, instead of feeling lost, I say out loud right to myself, I know I can do it. I've used my trick so many times, much more than you might guess. It helps me build my confidence, so I won't make a mess. When something strange I've got to learn, I try to concentrate and say out loud right to myself, I know I can do it. once. I can say it twice. I can. What a wonderful feeling to know. I can do it. Now that I've shared my trick with you, you'll always feel so smart. Each time you think, I know I can't, just look into your heart. Repeat the words the way I do, they'll help you every time. Just say out loud right to yourself, I know I can do it. Great song, he told Stephen. Tony the Tiger led the applause. Tony Jr. and Antoinette agreed. Toucan Sam had a rhyme for the occasion. It looks like music was the key to solve the midnight mystery. Snap and Crackle had a hard time chasing Pop away from Stephen's instrument. He wanted to play each one. Joshua and James looked very happy. Even Chief Ryan was smiling. What an exciting vacation this had been. Aunt Martha went over and kissed Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, for your lovely song. Thank you, Chief Ryan, Tony the Tiger, Tony Jr., Antoinette, and Toucan Sam for coming. And thank you, Snap, Crackle, and Pop for helping Joshua and James to solve the midnight mystery. <laughs>